You're listening to a Rock Candy podcast. Hi, I'm Peter Sintoscano, and this is Bubble and Squeak, a podcast with uncanny sounds, funny interludes, and stories, most weird, many true. Okay, here's episode nine. Our show today comes in three parts. Part one, an original radio play commissioned by Climate Change Theatre Action. You will hear me perform a radio adaptation of Dust by Marcus Youssef. Part two, my own climate change theatre action play, Bigger Love. It is set in the New York City apartment of a gay couple sometime in the near future. Jordan Sanderson and Israel Colazzo play the parts of Kyle and Joey. And part three, a sound slice created for us by listener Daniel Gonzalez. Before I begin housekeeping, I speak to you across a vast expanse of time as a representative of the Actual Life Program, a division of Innocence LLC. Hello? Can you hear me? Apologies. It is always like this. The technology I am employing to speak to you from a century into your theoretical future only works well in one direction. To me, you're very fuzzy. I hear it's often the same for you when you, what is it, Skype. We know more about ourselves now than we are physically capable of comprehending. In 2119, the NSN's actual life OS automatically analyzes up to 6 billion neural signals per second through chemical microchanges perpetually monitored in every actual person's digiskin. I am scared. Today is a very big day. The backstory. When the seas rose, the climate didn't just change, it split in two. Climate polarization, they called it. Actual life tells me you also use the term polarized, which is interesting because your two words, environment and the internet, in our collective future, they are one and the same. It was in the fields of death that the discovery was made. This was where they piled the bodies during the catastrophe as high as skyscrapers. Those that weren't swept out to the sea had to be dealt with. They burned them, damned the consequences to global warming. The mountains of flesh smoldered for months like mountains of rubber, until Key players in the consolidated funeral industry began to meet secretly with Silicon Valley engineers, recently relocated to Idaho. They wondered, could these megatons of incinerated human remains, euphemistically referred to as dust, be used for good? The introduction of proton-accelerated fiber optics provided the necessary disruption. When combined with dust... The reaction produced harnessable energy yields comparable to low-grade nuclear fission. With no waste, no toxicity, and no seeming limit to the amount of energy that could be generated. Except one, the availability of human bodies. It has to be humans. Though the remains of higher primates also produce energy, it is at a significantly less efficient rate. Lower mammals barely register. No one could explain why, until the founder of Innocence proposed that what we had captured was the energy of the human soul, and that, in partnership with each other, we had begun to collectively embody a real, tangible, physical manifestation of our own God. Once the surplus was gone, there was resistance to the farming of human beings, like chickens or pigs. They are bred in captivity, kept in small pens with hands, teeth, and feet removed to reduce aggression and conflict. In one market-led innovation, it is now possible to purchase dust from ethical suppliers where the humanimals are allowed outside and in some cases even to touch. But this is considerably more expensive and so remains a niche popular only among the most urbane and liberal of intelligentsia actual persons, or those with privilege. Those with privilege is an official designation, TWPs for short, 
or twerps if you're not one. Privilege is calculated across several major categories as defined by data gathered by actual life. The privilege algorithm is neither moral nor aspirational. It simply reflects what is. I am a TWP. Hello? Hello? Sorry, I can't tell if you're still there. Just give me a second. It was me who suggested a pivotal alteration to the system, if I can toot my own horn. This has allowed it to thrive. Once a generation, the families of those with privilege periodically are required to sacrifice one of their own. It mollifies the human animals, offers them a sense that their suffering is shared by all. In a way, it does the same for us, TWPs. We too pay a price for our comforts, our privilege. This makes it more possible for us to live with what we are doing to each other and the world. As I said, today is a big day for me. Only those in a very specific situation are chosen to speak backwards to our past, to our together before. Innocence has limited interest in history. We prefer to look forward. Today, I will return to what your primitive religion taught us is where we began, become something fundamentally more useful, a provider. I have been chosen. It is the gift we have all been given to understand that we are dinosaurs, literally, our flesh organic, our decomposed bodies a resource. Today, I return to dust. You're scared too. Just looking at you, I can tell. There's no need to worry. It's, it's fine. No matter what happens, it's what we all become. Every single one. Are you there? Hello? I'm in the bedroom. Oh, gosh, it's crazy out there still. There's food in the kitchen that Tanner made. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm good. What? He's a good cook. I don't like all that free food. You know, free of meat and dairy and gluten and flavor. I get it, he's a vegan, we know. <laughs> Mm. Oh, hey, you. Have you noticed Tanner's looks great, but he has really bad breath? Yeah, I know. And he hovers, too. Well, they all hover. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did the art move go? We barely got a dent in. The Met had over a million pieces in that underground tunnel. It's a miracle almost none of it got damaged. And some guy from the mayor's office said pretty much every basement in the city got flooded out this time. Still flooded in some places, I heard. So where are they moving it to? Get this. An undisclosed location. Some place upstate, I bet. Or Svalbard, where they store the strategic art reserves. Oh, oh yeah. I actually got to pack up a Maldson Hartley. Who would have thought a fairy from Missouri would be handling priceless pieces of art? Big deal. I get to hand the prices to her every day. <laughs> um, where is everyone? Well, Tanner is out foraging. <sighs> Dumpster diving, more like. Um, Jenna actually has an audition for a drag review. She's like really into being trans and doing drag at the same time. Nino is... who knows? He said he was going to see if his work is open again. He's gotten no response there. And I think Lewis is looking for some place to do laundry. Oh, and by the way, he wants to know if you have any extra meds he can borrow. He's not been able to get in touch with his doctor. Um, yeah, I think so. 
What's up with this doctor? She's out in Long Island. What the hell is he going to a doctor in Long Island for? It's complicated, but he said she's the only trans male friendly doctor he could find. Jesus, it's 2028. Yeah, well, I was just reading this terrible story. This trans woman who, after the storm, she cut her leg on some debris or something <gasps> and went to one of the emergency clinics and they treated her like shit. It just sucks. <sighs> So, they're, like, all gone. You know, this is the first time we've been alone in the apartment since the refugee crisis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. So, do you think we should move? Ah, uh, not this again. I mean, a lot of people are. You know a lot of people can't. I'm just glad we have this place and can take in some people. Maybe we can see about getting a bigger apartment or something. <laughs> a hostel for the really storm-driven creoles and queens of New York City. It's something. It's community. We can do more to help. Oh my god. You totally sound like Mayo Morales. Bigger storms need bigger love. <laughs> well, it's true. And what's wrong with bigger love? Oh. Now we're alone and you're thinking about big love, hey? Well, I miss you. I miss you too. I'm feeling the atmospheric pressure has dramatically changed. Oh, has it? Yeah. Yeah, a storm's brewing. A big, nasty storm. Oh, is that right? What, you do weather reports now? Mm-hmm. The swirling masses of pressure are building up. And the storm surges. Ooh, the storm surge. <laughs> oh shit, someone's back. <laughs> Let me set the scene for you. I'm in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. I'm here at the Formosa Red Line station. It's a Saturday night. Around 7 p.m., folks presumably are going to and from social plans, dinner plans. The subway system is actually pretty crowded, about as crowded as rush hour, but it lacks that certain frantic energy. Folks just seem generally more re relaxed. At one end of the station platform, there's a transit officer with a whistle who's directing the flow of pedestrian traffic. As people pile onto the train, he barks orders. Anyone who isn't yet on the train has to step back and allow the train to proceed. A little orchestral ditty is played to announce both the arrival and departure of the train into each station. The music is actually different for each station I've been to. Bubble and Squeak is written and produced by me, Peter Santoscano. I mostly make the show for me and for my husband, Glenn, who is my soulmate and my fellow traveler. Learn more about Climate Change Theater Action on their Facebook page or on their website, climatechangetheateraction.com. Marcus Youssef, who wrote Dust, lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. Learn more about his plays and other work over at marcusyousef.com. See photos from Daniel Gonzalez's trip to Taiwan and much more on Instagram at scmodstyle. The Bubble and Squeak theme song is Worthless by the Jelly Rocks from the Bang and Whimper album. Feel free to tweet at me at P2Sun, the letter P, the number two, S-O-N. And thanks for listening. For more shows like this one, visit rockcandyrecordings.com. You'll say your line a little bit uh, louder because you're shouting it up the hallway yeah. so that we hear a difference from when you're in the bedroom. So kind of like shout it out, I'm in the bedroom, okay. like you would if you're in a, a yeah. long apartment. And action. 
Hey, I'm home.